on a fairly uh, regular basis. Did you do any during the windy last couple of days? No, we've got one today. Today, no, I just did some fun. I killed yeah. It's always cheer for him to hit the three, and they're usually out of door. When you're on this sort of radar, you can be very careful when you see it. Dig it off near the defenders of the car that's coming around. Don't take chances. What? We're in Charter's Towers now, two k's away and civilization, I mean like, you know, it's because there's Maccas and Subway. I suppose they're actually good indicators if you're still in civilization or not. Charter's Towers, see that big bull there? Let's see. Let's check something if it's really big. You've reached your destination. I know, Tom Tom, shut up. Oh, there's Maccas. See We're that? Home. There's Maccas, there's home. We're in civilization. Yeah, we really are in a civilization yet. I mean, still. That's Maccas. Maccas is actually a good indicator if a place is civilized or not. I mean, it is. Oops, that's Maccas. Four kilometers straight down there. My name is Edmund Clark, and it is about my pleasure to welcome you to our Venus Stamp Battery. My very good friend and partner, George Jackson, and I built it in 1872, not long after gold was discovered here in Charter's Towers. Now, this is where the ore is crushed and the gold painstakingly extracted. Now, please, don't be confused when you hear the words battery and mill. They really mean very much the same thing. They're practically interchangeable. But battery describes the machinery that crushes the ore, while mill describes the wider operation and processes. But never mind all that. All the machinery footings in this place are brick. And we made all those bricks right here on site. This is one of them. Now that is what the stamp battery looks like. It's powered by steam. When Jackson and I started our mini operation in July 1872, we had one five-head stamp battery like right that. In the same month, we added a three battery. Now the three battery was crushing by August. And in September, we had four, with a total of 20 stamp heads. When the ore is delivered from the mine, it is first weighed on the weight bridge and then dumped into the hoppers behind this building. From there, 
The rock is broken before being taken by bucket elevator to the stand batteries. Water is a vital element in this process because it lubricates the standards. And we had a serious drought in the winter of 1872. <laughs> you know, well, I can laugh about it now. But that scoundrel, William Buchanan, had his men build a race from my water supply on Gladstone Creek to feed his own mill, which was nearby. <laughs> we soon put a stop to that. Now, in addition to water, mercury is fed to the stones <coughs> to dissolve the gold and form what we call an amalgam, which traps the gold. <coughs> amalgam, which is gold or mercury, is then fed into a series of amalgamated copper plates. The gold is then easily recovered by heating the amalgam. Because mercury vaporizes at a fairly low temperature. And then the gold is quickly separated from its slippery host. Now, when the ore does not contain any large amount of free gold, the pulverized rock material is passed over the Wilfley tables, which is inclined boards covered with coarse woolen blankets. Uh, this is a piece of one of those blankets. The washings from those blankets are also given a mercury treatment. Now, by October 1872, the Venus mill had crushed 2,147 tons of ore and extracted 5,439 ounces of gold. Jackson and I had done rather well. In three short months, we made a profit of 1,200 Pounds, which is a lot of money in anybody's language. Uh, the effects of the drought were severe. Many mills stopped production for lack of water, but we had plenty of water. So in September, we raised the crushing price the miners complained bitterly. The Northern Miner, that was Charles Tower's influential newspaper, virtually accused us of being hardship profiteers. Well, George and I decided that we had better things to do with our time and money. So, in October, we put the Venus Mill up for sale. We couldn't take water for granted in the early years of Charters Towns. During droughts, People had to scrounge for water from the town's privately owned wells and were frequently charged threepence a bucket full. Of course, many of the wells were contaminated by runoff from the... ...at the top there. Um, there would then be a photo and he'd stand here and he'd pull on that lever to open up that door there. The small rock would then flow down the chute and straight into the stem battery. So this machine here is the actual stamp battery. Um, it's a five-head stamper. See, it's got five rods to it there, and at the bottom of each rod is one of these things. That's the, that's the stamp head, that's what actually crushes the rock down. Each one of those 